On to get it started now, the kicker, Chris Boswell. And we are underway from Cincinnati. This will be taken in at the one. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Now a first down throw, Tannehill, flushed out right. He'll have a first down past the 40. He finds Corey Davis. Well, he ran free there after the catch as that winds up going for 38. Well, Parker, it's pretty simple. One thing you don't want to see defensively on the very first snap of the game, some guy running free like we just saw there. Heck of a start for this offense, no doubt. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. Derrick Henry looking for a seam but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play there. Second down. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Looking to throw on second down. Tannehill. Steps away to his... And he's taken down. Trying to do a little too much. Getting outside of the pocket. And that results in a sack. Bud Dupree. Credit him with a sack. And it goes as a loss of six. Third and long. It's Tannehill. Oh, he's going to let this go for the end zone. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Uh, give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. They were probably hoping to get him a little bit closer for a shorter field goal, but he was able to get it done from deep. Nice little tester for him to begin things, huh? I think he was open for a little bit more of a chip shot. Instead, they made him stretch it out a little bit, but he's got to feel great now that he put it through the pipes. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll run with the NC State man. It's Jalen Samuels. Oh, he's got a little daylight. 25 yards to pick up there and also a first down. I know that play went to the left side, and that's what it was designed to do, an outside handoff there. But how about the whole offensive line being involved? Seal the left side where the play was going, what they call play side. But how about on the back side? Just taking care of business to make sure no one can get there and disrupt it. Is the biggest key the left tackle? Without a doubt. Control that edge. Get out there. You want the left tackle. If you bring your tight end over there, either way, control the edge of the line of scrimmage. you got a chance to rumble. Back-to-back -back good plays. Have them on the move on first down. Now Connor. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. That opening drive rhythm continues right into play number three. Whatever they decided that they wanted to run before the game, it's working pretty well for them right now. Moving the ball downfield at a nice rate. And guess what? I think the chain crew might have to get a little oxygen over there. They have to keep moving downfield with first downs on each play. Another nice gain, 16 yards there at a first down again. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all this stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. A loss of two there, second down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. Snags it for the pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. 
Well, there definitely was some juice on that pass. And while tight ends don't always have the same reputation for hands as wide receivers do, in this case, that ball is expected to be caught. They run on first down, but it only produces a gain of two. It's second down now. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. On second down now. It's Henry, and he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. 3 nothing after one on EA Sports. From the gun on third down, Tannehill. He'll get this one into the hands of Lewis. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. A gain of 19 and picking up the first. On first down, Tannehill. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Now a carry for the shifty Deion Lewis. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try to defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Eluding the pressure right. He may try and run for this. Tannehill able to take off and pick up the first as well. Now that's a quarterback who's in charge out there right now. Wants to throw the ball on third down, doesn't find anyone open, tucks it away, takes off, and picks up the first down. Not by a little, but by plenty. This is Lewis. And he works his way forward for about four up to the midfield stripe. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. From the 50, it's Tannehill. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. 158 left to play till we hit halftime. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime. We need, need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed, if there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And the Steelers will go on offense here. First and 10. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Oh, he's trying for Smith Schuster, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Logan Ryan. And they will finally stop him, but a great return. Gets that football all the way down to the 16-yard line. Ready, ready. 60 out more. After the interception, here's Tannehill. Being chased out left. And he's got it. And he will score. Touchdown, Titans. A 16-yard touchdown. And the Titans are able to extend their lead. The defense is doing their best, but they're struggling right now. They'll look for some help from their own offense to keep them in the game. Extra point up and good by Sucka. And the lead grows to 10-0. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. Joseph now to kick this one away. We got this. And 
Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And it's been a miserable start for them offensively, obviously. Two drives, two interceptions. And this is where you have to know your quarterback and know how you actually have to reach him. Do you do it with a little bit of humor? Maybe you break the ice a little bit like, hey, didn't we practice in that color jersey all week, not the one that you're throwing it to? Or maybe you have to be stern with him. But whatever it's going to take to get the message, it has to be done. He's putting the game in jeopardy. Thus far, it hasn't been a real fun half for them, but a play like that, that may get them off the schneid a little bit, get them loosened up and moving. Kind of seems like they've been sleepwalking and still sitting on zero points. And it's not always making an adjustment. Sometimes it's just going back. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. He's going to launch it for Washington. That's caught inside the 20. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. For an offense that has not found the end zone yet, that's a big play. There's the spark right there. The big play that they needed. Now they've got to go ahead and finish this drive and put this ball in the end zone. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. James Washington was the intended target, but it's going to be second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Again, it's Roethlisberger. And that's going to be knocked away in the end zone. It's incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver, and it's third down. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Now it's Roethlisberger escaping the pressure right. He can run for it, and he will. And he's in for six and a stealer touchdown. A 16-yard touchdown run as they are now on the board here in the first half. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yep. of a half, heading into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take it to the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed, and a lot of football, a full half to be played. Derrick Henry trots back out there and gets ready to go. And the good news, his team's winning. The bad news, he hasn't had the game that he's hoped to, at least to this point here in the second quarter. And a lot of that is pride because these types of backs want to be in the center of all the action and leading their team to victory. They'll take the win right now, hoping to jump his game up as this one moves on. And he probably wants a little bit more of the spotlight going forward. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. It's caught by Davis. A first down there on a pickup of 25. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. He's going deep for Brown. And this is taken in at the five. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Trying to punch it in with Henry. And they'll get him down just shy of the goal line at about the one. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. Not time enough for a play and then a timeout, you wouldn't think. So with four seconds left, they're going for it. And now a sneak, Tannehill. And he gets in. Touchdown, Tennessee. Ryan Tannehill in the final seconds of the first half. And the Titans are able to extend their lead. And that's a lead that excites the team as they head into the half. Good way to finish things off. Yeah, able to extend that lead, and you always say it, that can totally change the complexion of half number two. Yeah, it changes your morale, changes your outlook. But even before that, 
Let's see if they decide to kind of squib kick or what they're going to do on the kickoff because you don't want to give up a big play right before the half ends. Good point. Short, short kick. One of the up middle take it now. Let's go, baby. So we reach it. So he comes out of nowhere. He's got this handlebar mustache, greasy hair. And he says, would you rather eat a jar of mayonnaise or three sticks of butter? And I'm look. Well, all right, never mind. Third quarter action now. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25. Couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is. Right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a real, do I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. <laughs> we'll see if that script is a good one for him. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans 42. You know, when I see passes like that, I'm reminded of something you and I talked about yesterday. Big Ben was a wide receiver the first three years of high school, sitting behind the coach's son. And then he finally got that opportunity. I think he's made the most of it. It's always the coach's son, isn't it? But you know where it helps him? When he looks downfield, he knows what the receivers are going to do. He actually has wide receivers' eyes when he's throwing the ball. On first and ten is counter. He's able to get six. A nice pickup down to the 21. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Black 20. From the red zone now, here's Roethlisberger on first down. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Jarrell Casey with a little how do you do as he gets in there for the sack. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Play fake to Connor. Now Roethlisberger out to his left. He'll run it. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Flush to his right. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender is making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything that warranted a flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. So a decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they inch a bit closer. Yeah, but still lots of time to go in this one. That's why you hear that clapping on the sidelines, right? Hey, got some points. As you said, inching their way back in. Time left to go out and get that victory. Ready, set. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. Tannehill on first down. Looking deep here for Deion Lewis. And the defense has it covered. It's intercepted. Picked up by Minka Fitzpatrick. And he's able to get it back to right around the 27. The good old cover three defense, partner. When you start playing football as a safety, that's the first thing you're taught. Middle of the field, be as deep as the deepest receiver in any zone and break on the football when it's thrown and pick it off, just as we saw there. And they work this well up field across the 45. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones in a first down. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along. And he is going to be taken down. 
And that should be the final play of this third quarter. Rashawn Evans, the linebacker, recording the sack there. Back now in Cincinnati. It's the Steelers with the football, but trailing here as we get going in quarter number four. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. 23 yards to pick up there. Working the sideline there. Good route, good catch. First down, and he gets out of bounds. They have to like the play calling because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away. They can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively. That's how it's going to work. Sidelines and then completions to use the clock. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver that time. That'll bring up second down. Now Roethlisberger to throw. And time finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football, and he's taken down. Jayon Brown able to get him for a loss of about three. So the sack, and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. Here's Roethlisberger to throw. Oh, he's going to go for it all. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked by Kevin Byer. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Brandon, offensively, this has been a tough day for him. Trying to find a place to throw the football. It's been extremely difficult. I've got to give a lot of credit to the secondary, especially the corners. who have had the receivers on lockdown. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. On second down. It's Lewis, and he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Here's Tannehill. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Charles, thinking back to what you said in the first quarter, that part of the magic elixir for a road victory for these underdogs was going to be winning the turnover battle. Well, they only have one right now. Look at the scoreboard. Yeah, not exactly playing to the form that I subscribed, right? When you talk about winning that turnover battle, that evens things out, especially for a road team, especially for a team that's an underdog. And now out come the Steelers. And three interceptions in this game. And I would have to think, I wasn't a quarterback, but number four is kind of, oh, you're like, oh, man, I can't throw four. No, and what's interesting is, what do the coaches decide to do now? Having thrown three, do you alter your offensive strategy? Do you take the ball out of his hands and maybe turn to the running game? Or do you have that supreme confidence he's going to turn things around? <laughs> we'll see what they do. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. He's got a first down and then some at midfield. And brought down across the 50 to the 49-yard line. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. They come up on a first and 10, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Now he'll escape to his left. He'll try and run it. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. Yeah, he only gets a few yards on first and ten, but he's better off doing that than throwing an incompletion or even worse, an interception. They'll look to throw. He'll find Smith-Schuster. That's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 31-yard line. Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. Here's Roethlisberger. And yes, complete to the tight end, McDonald. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10, flushed out right. Johnson's got it complete. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts. 
As the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go in the game. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven. But first things first, they need to score as they come up. And it's caught. It's a touchdown. So they rally here in the final minute. And they're an extra point away from tying this game. Extra point now by Boswell. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Boswell for the extra point. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. So that drives seven plays in length. And it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. 17-17 the score. All even to this point as the kick's away. comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. In a tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk-reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Tannehill uncorks one for Davis. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. Looking here for Smith downfield. It's caught inside the 25. And now they're going to get the timeout. So a huge play has him in field goal range with a chance to possibly send this one to OT. And now with four seconds left, we get a timeout call. On now is Ryan Suckup for the field goal try. He's hit on his one earlier attempt tonight, but this a little more pressure packed for the win. And the 10 year vet knocks it through the goalposts. And with that, they take the lead here 20 to 17. Well, a little drama there at the end, but really this thing was already decided. The late points get scored, and then it ends on the kickoff. And I'm right there with you, partner. At the end of the game, they knew what they had to do. Just make sure you don't cough up the football at the end. Just take care of it, and victory was theirs, and that's exactly what they did.